začneš? Yeah. I guess we, we, we can start now. So welcome to our talk about uh, eliminating Beatles in Fedora. <laughs> it is a funny name. Uh, if you uh, didn't get it, it's like reference to bugs. So uh, my name is Frantik Zatloukal and my colleague here is Lukáš Ružička. We both work uh, as Fedora quality engineers. And next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> didn't work. Not so. And the quality of Fedora is basically defined by uh, various uh, rules. One of them, <laughs> the ma main thing we adhere to is uh, release criterions, which uh, is a set of com uh, pretty thoroughly written documents specifying criterions that Fedora must, uh, must have for each its development milestone. Uh, the basic criterion in some, uh, is something we have managed to reach for uh, even for our nightly builds, which means all Fedora nightlies should uh, should uh, uh, be working basically, but I wouldn't be trying that on your work machines. <laughs> and uh, basic criteria means yeah, that's basically always ready raw height. It means we, uh, that you can use uh, mostly on our secondary lap laptops or uh, anything you uh, want to experiment uh, daily, and it should like should boot, shouldn't eat your kittens, and so on and so on. Uh, beta criteria is something we uh, we check if the release uh, fulfills for beta releases. Uh, it's basically a reduced set of uh, final product cr uh, criterions, and same for final, just uh, extended criterions. Uh, we leverage CI gating even for rawhide, uh, which which uh, guarantees that. Uh, raw height doesn't get broken. There is one small exception, which I'll get back to later. And uh, then we rely on uh, users giving karma to new builds, uh, which we'll also get to later. And mainly, uh, I would add that it depends on you users uh, to uh, verify, test Fedora, and report, report bugs to us. So how QA uh, watches all over it? Uh, first pillar would be uh, testing of Fedora, which, uh, which descends into manual testing, automated testing, and CI gating. And uh, then there is a second pillar, which is discussions and tri uh, triage. Uh, that includes uh, having blocker, blocker meetings, blocker reviews, uh, our QA meetings, which are open to communi community, and uh, before release go no-go meetings, and uh, other product meetings. And third pillar is uh, bug fixing, which we collaborate on with uh, developers. Uh, we coordinate fixing and prioritizing work in a in bunch of upstream projects, and we help uh, developers with testing uh, of the fixes for regressions and other, other issues that they could cause. Demo time. Okay. <coughs> so please go to the computer. Uh, a day in the life of John Lennon, a demo. De uh, John Lennon is a beetle in our system. And uh, so what should we do if we want to get rid of John Lennon? So uh, the first step, John appears on stage. Uh, let's see, we have test cases defined. So uh, the, there is one called the test case desktop browser, which basically is there to test that a desktop browser works. Primarily, we aim this on Firefox. And uh, there is a matrix with the test results and also with the links that lead to the described test case. So everybody, even a passers-by, uh, anybody who comes to a Beatles concert can come, open the test case and uh, read the description how to test and what are the expected results. So, for example, clean boot the Fedora you wish to test. This could be a system installed from a particular snapshot, pre-release or release or a live image. Launch the default web browser in a typical way. So, that's good because uh, 
I launch my web browser differently. I usually hit the super key and type Firefox. Uh, some other people use the icon to start it, so uh, that's fine. Both ways are the typical ways. Uh, if you first try it, method fails. So let's say you click on the icon, it doesn't work, so you should try with a different method. Once you have managed to launch the browser, attempt uh, some activities with it, like open a web page, for example. This is Chromium because uh, we don't want to fiddle with those opened uh, Firefox tabs. So we are performing a Firefo Firefox test case on a Chromium. Uh, we don't do that usually. Yeah, because uh, Chromium browser isn't blocking on any of our supported de deliverables. So this is one of the processes of the test, and uh, we can say Chromium we can crashes. And Does it? It doesn't crash. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> For example, now it, it would crash. Uh, so the expected results are not passed, and uh, because the browser should be capable of connecting to and correctly displaying the FAC page, and when it crashes, it's not met. The criterion or the test result is not met. So what do we do now? So uh, it's time to call Mark Chapman, I think. Uh, and uh, he prepares, and uh, we go to the John Zilla. And uh, try to try to uh, make the make the world uh, make the world look good again. So this is the uh, Red Hat Bugzilla that uh, serves us to maintain uh, the overview of bugs. Or St still serves. <laughs> it still serves. Yes. Uh, however, it's necessary to say that some upstream projects uh, do not go to Bugzilla anymore for the information, which is quite difficult for us to, you know, think about all of the possible trackers. So uh, you would go to the Bugzilla and you would fill these, uh, these informations, find a component and uh, yeah, you know, m my boss told me to test Chromium, and I played the game for one month. He wasn't satisfied. <laughs> so we, we usually do, do, do the testing for, for hide releases, so this is uh, why I'm changing the version of Fedora that I want to report the bug against. And uh, we usually don't fill in the hardware, uh, unless you know it happens only on some architectures, it will help the developers, but usually either us QA team or developers will be able to figure out if it's a problem of some architecture or not. So, so I guess I was doing it incorrectly because I always fill in the hardware <laughs> on which I found the bug. So this is basically how you can uh, type in a short summary of a bug report. And then some details, for example, I open it. Crashed. Okay. Of course, we usually try to give as much information as possible, what we have, and uh, we collect logs, and uh, we put it there also. Uh, sometimes we also do uh, PDB debugging and uh, we use the, uh, all the reports from it. Uh, sometimes we use Ubert. Ubert is good. If uh, you go through the, if, if it happens to catch the bug, so half of your work is done because it collects all the necessary files and so on and so on. And then you submit bug report. Uh, now, sometimes John is serious and uh, uh, we need, you know, to 
If it bre breaks the mentioned criterion, it's serious bug and that should be proposed. As yeah, a when, when one beetle blocks the concert, then it's more serious. So when it blocks the show, you need to report a so-called blocking bug or a blocker. Which we have a nice application to report it. Uh, you can see the status quo of, of now that there are two accepted blockers for Fedora 41 Beta. There is one accepted previous release blocker which was a blocking bug that didn't got fixed. Uh, there is one proposed freeze exception. We will talk about it a little bit later and there are two prioritized bugs. And uh, now we want to propose the, uh, the blocking bug because it was serious. So w you have the bug number, you have the milestone, you can propose it for 41 beta and 41 final, maybe both. And you can propose it as a blocker or you could propose a freeze exception if it wasn't a blocker and uh, always add the justification why you think this is a blocking bug. Uh, there are links to basic, beta and final in the right bottom part of the page. So you could read the release criteria for, uh, for the stage you are going to report the blocker to. So it's beta, you read the beta and the basic criteria. If you can find it in those criteria, it's a blocker and it's good to propose. Once you propose it, it takes 30 minutes to uh, upload to Bugzilla. Well, it uploads to Bugzilla immediately, but uh, to, to sync back, it needs some time. Uh, František uh, tries to make it faster, a make bit it for faster so that you could see it. Now when you come to the overview, It's there. Uh, so once the blocker is there, uh, we usually vote if it's indeed a blocking issue or not. Uh, that's done through uh, uh, asynchronous dis discussions we have created for each each bug. Uh, it's not not longer uh, uh, not synced here yet. Um, uh, it, it should be in a minute. So you could hit the vote over in the proposed freeze exception, for example. Yeah. So um, there is a process called a bl uh, blocker review process where people meet and discuss whether this really is a blocker or not. And uh, it requires some quorum to, de to decide. And in the past, we were doing this in the meetings and uh, the meeting would last for two or three hours. It was really tough and uh, therefore we decided that maybe we could use some asynchronous process to vote for the blockers and save some time. So uh, usually like this, you put one of the resolution, uh, you put plus one or minus one depending whether you agree or not whether you think it's a blocker or not, and uh, you put some uh, reason why you think so, and you save it. The bot will go through the comments, it would collect all the pluses and minuses, and it would update the vote summary uh, in the beginning of the page. So. Uh, So you were able to see that uh, I voted uh, plus one and now uh, you can see that uh, it's been voted and why isn't that updated? I don't know, but it normally it? updates. It, it's not yet. <laughs> but it normally updates here too, so you, you will be able to see on this, uh, on this overview which blockers are voted for and which blockers are voted against. And during the meeting, we just say, uh, yeah, we think this is the case and it's far more quicker.
Yeah, so we did that. We did that basically. Oh, we did that. <laughs> and we did this too. Uh, so maybe... I, I can take this one. Uh, blocking bugs are, just to summarize, uh, issues that uh, violate any of our criterions. Uh, for the bugs we think that are serious enough that we shouldn't release with them, we have free exception process, uh, which I'll get to in, in a bit. Uh, the issues that uh, don't have clear cut winner, like plus, plus blocker, minus blocker, get, uh, get discussed at uh, blocker bugs meetings because there are usually some, uh, some uh, uh, expertise needed from uh, respective areas uh, of, of their work. <laughs> and block, uh, blocker box uh, was the most important hold the federal release until they are all fixed or decided not, not blocking. Sometimes the discussion is very, very uh, heated and uh, sometimes even FESCO must decide whether there is a blocking bug or not. And uh, after this has been done, we make sure that Chapman does his, does his work and to verify that John is dead. Uh, we do it by retesting uh, the package once uh, the update with a fix is built. So we install it and run the tests again, especially uh, against the bug we found, but we also run the tests like we run the whole test case. So uh, sometimes when one bug is fixed, another one appears. We, when we fix John, Paul comes and learns, or Ringo. <laughs> and w once we verify the fix does indeed work and addresses the, the mentioned issue, uh, it's mostly us from QA team, some, in some cases even users switch the bugzilla status to verify it, which is important for uh, blocking, uh, blocking tracking uh, in our processes and just again save the changes. And when it's verified, so uh, it means that the developers could close the bug and... Or it will get auto-closed by pushing the respective build. So uh, now to talk a bit about the freeze process itself. Uh, federal release uh, before every release milestone. <laughs> like beta milestone or final milestone uh, gets into free status, uh, which means uh, no, no new packages, no changes can, uh, can land in Fedora. That, uh, that means also infrastructure freezes because we in the past had issues uh, from infrastructure changes last minute. So this, this affects that, that too. And only, only bugs uh, that were designated as blockers or free exceptions and accepted by us uh, can can be addressed uh, during the freeze. It usually takes uh, two to three weeks before the before the release, uh, depending on uh, if we delay or not. <coughs> and uh, once we get closer to a release and we have viable release candidate, uh, we hold go and no go meetings uh, where we discuss uh, release readiness with other stakeholders uh, like uh, Fesco marketing and uh, infrastructure and so on and so on. You want to add something? Yeah, I would say that if the blocker review meetings are heated, so go, no, go meetings are super heated. Uh, because uh, especially when we have slipped once or twice and then uh, people want to release and uh, we are still fine blockers and Beatles are still playing. Uh, I remember uh, once, uh, we usually have a, a lead in our team, Adam Williamson, and he does the, the, the community meetings and uh, he takes care about everything and once he decided to go and uh, take some time off <laughs> in the release <laughs> days, you know, in, in that, that part of, of the process. And uh, w we were there and uh, we were like, oh, there are some blockers and uh, 
usually when Adam Williamson says like, I think it's blocking, then everybody says, yeah, it's blocking. And when he says, I, I don't think it's so blocking, I, I, and then everybody says, yeah, it, it's okay. <laughs> and because there was no Adam at those days, so we were like, we think it's blocking, it's not blocking, we should release, we can't release. And it was, you know, like, a very in interesting meeting, and we didn't release that that day. Yeah, there is more. It's uh, no more Beatles, however. <laughs> so uh, the testing testing of Fedora like uh, relies on a bunch of uh, different types, styles, and areas of testing. It starts with uh, individual testing of like uh, users testing their respective packages areas as the team. Uh, going through the testing test cases uh, we also do organized testing like test days and test weeks uh, if you are interested as a user or engineer about organizing those feel free to ask Sumantra if you can wave <laughs> who organizes the th these events uh, we have thoroughly defined test cases for all of the blocking areas so every release criterion has associated test cases with uh, exact steps how to how anybody can test uh, the respective area, and uh, we are testing across the entire operating system, which can get pretty complicated sometimes. And uh, manual testing uh, provides uh, great variability, which uh, is something we call exploratory testing. So we tell users or ourselves, our colleagues, to like try to break break things. And uh, on the other hand, compared to automated testing, it, it has limited test coverage. And it doesn't require too much of a knowledge. And uh, the one point I would like to show is uh, updates with, uh, with Karma. Uh, the Before you show that, mm -hmm. uh, I think that manual testing is a great entry level for any newcomers that uh, are interested in helping to test Fedora because uh, those test cases are prescribed so they just can open them and follow them step by step. Uh, they don't need to know much and they could learn a lot by uh, doing, the, doing the tests. Uh, they can l learn a lot about Linux and about how Fedora works. And... Uh Karma testing begins with uh, you enabling the testing updates on a stable Fedora release, which you can find out how on uh, our wiki pages or by simply Googling. Uh, and once you enable that repository, install the updates as you would normally would, uh, for example, through GNOME software, you can uh, then run uh, Fedora Easy Karma, which is a small command line utility to uh, to provide an easy way to provide the feedback for each of the updates that are currently in the testing phase. Uh, I'll do a just small, small showcase. Once you run it, you, you will see a uh, like report for each of the package that you have from testing repository installed on your system. You will see the package name, you will see some notes for, for that update, who submitted it, and com uh, comments from other users. And uh, if the package works for you, uh, which you, you'll be able to tell by its description, you can then give it a positive karma uh, or negative one just by typing in one or minus one or skip it completely. And it works fine. And then karma gets sent to the where you can see the nicer UI for each of the updates. And so the workflow is basically like, uh, like that, that uh, every package, uh, every change that lands in stable Fedora release uh, gets uh, some time in uh, uh, the updates testing repository and until it reaches enough of stable, uh, stable karma, it stays, stays there and so it prevents users from seeing too much of a breakage on, on their systems. The, Updates testing users are heroes we don't deserve. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, we also have some automated testing, uh, which uh, on the opposite is a, something like an organized testing, not an ad hoc testing, uh, with less variabil variability. Uh, I decided to use the word organized, but uh, we weren't sure whether this is a correct, correct term, but uh, what we mean is that uh, we know what will be tested, when it will be tested, how it will be tested, and what the results should be exactly. Uh, we have predefined test cases. Uh, these might be the same uh, that are predefined for manual testing, but we uh, run them in a special, uh, sp special testing environment uh, called OpenQA. Uh, they provide great coverage because uh, we test each nightly compose every day uh, when it gets built. Uh, we test uh, several uh, platforms like uh, ARM or Arch64 or uh, x86. Uh, we test, for example, GNOME or Fedora workstation images. Uh, we test KD images. And uh, however, to join the automated testing and start to develop uh, the test scripts needs some kind of knowledge so uh, the the entry level is higher than with manual testing so it's maybe not very uh, very uh, easy for a new newcomer or a new starter to to uh, join here in this field but if somebody would be interested uh, we could help I think uh, open QA is the automated test tool uh, that uh, is provided by SUSE. SUSE is the author uh, with Adam Williamson working with them and uh, giving them some patches for it. Uh, it runs on Composes uh, every day and uh, the openqa.fedoraproject.org is the gate to the to the system so you can see that there are various products Fedora or Fedora R64 uh, and uh, you can see the overview of the tests uh, here is the, the there are latest tests for rawhide so you can see the flavors uh, KD Life ISO is one of them the flavors server boot is another flavor that gets tested a GNOME workstation is another, Silver Blue is there, and we also test uh, Workstation Live OS build. Uh, we now have two ISOs produced every day. Uh, the, the one or one is produced with the Lorex stuff and uh, the other one is uh, with the OS build. Uh, the, the green dots mean that the test has passed. Uh, you can see what the test was. For example, there was a graphical weight login is just uh, a pretest that logs you onto the machine. But if you go to the next one, when you just put it away by yes, and you go to base package install remove. So this is a uh, test case that installs and removes some packages. Uh, you could uh, you could see that it passes. Uh, if you want to check it, if it doesn't pass, for example, and uh, you can't uh, troubleshoot from here, uh, you can run a video in logs and assets. There is the video. Uh, you can take a look how it works. It's, it's very fast, the video recording. <laughs> in Firefox, you can slow down the video a little bit, but... Uh, and also, this, this, this testing makes more sense for uh, for like gr graphical applications, graphical environments, because it's literally clicking in the same way as user would click through some applications. Uh, so program. you could uh, go to uh, you could go back a little bit, and uh, you could find, for example, the desktop login. No, it's notifications. It was one above. Desktop login, uh, 
also passes and if you run the video you will be able to see that uh, what the test machine does is it basically moves the mouse and clicks on locations as a normal user, a regular user would do it. Uh, how does it know where to click? Uh, you have an image uh, with some metadata telling you what is the correct spot in the image and this is called a needle and according to the needles it will know where to click. If it can't find the needle so it uh, throws out an error and dies. Uh, which sometimes creates false positives, of course, because uh, maybe the font changes or the color changes and then uh, it thinks the needle isn't there. This is usually very easy to recognize and you could fix it quite immediately. If you still get failures, then probably it's something, something else. And also the, the, these kinds of tests, uh make it possible for us to have so many blocking del deliverables and, and, uh, and release quickly because uh, without uh, this aut automation help, it won't be possible to uh, meet the milestones in required criteria. I think you can stop it. I just, uh, yep. could you just come back a little bit, just uh -huh. one page back? Uh, and click on details and then click on graphical weight login, for example, but this time, yes, this, the link. Uh, you can also see the test script here. Uh, it's basically Perl uh, with some open QA uh, methods. And uh, it's very easy actually to to write a test case that would be tested by OpenQA. Uh, if, if you have some, some workloads that you would like to have automatically tested, feel free to come to us, ping us, get in touch, and uh, we'll integrate your, your tests, or work, uh, tests for your work for workloads in our OpenQA tool. Yeah, uh, I would just say it's easy to start with OpenQA. The problem is that uh, how the Fedora repository is structured it requires you to follow some steps, and uh, so that if you so if you want it, if you want your tests be merged into the Fedora stack, you would need to follow some guidelines and procedures. But if you just want to run your own OpenQA instance, which is also very easy, and uh, I have uh, written several guides how to do it, they are online somewhere. Uh, so you can just uh, go ahead and uh, set up your own OpenQA instance and start testing. And in that case, if you don't want your tests to be merged into Fedora stack, you can just write them easily and without following the guidelines. So I would talk a small bit about uh, CI gating which is something uh, we have started doing in past years uh, that helps to guard uh, Fedora and especially the nightly Rawhide releases from complete uh, breakage. Uh, the basic package workflow is that you build, in, build it in Koji, uh, you create an update in Bodhi or it gets auto-created and uh, then OpenQA steps in and I should be able to show a bit. This is one of the packages in grid path, which you can see that uh, our testing rejected this update because it broke some of the blocking, blocking tests. So I'm not sure if uh, what the failure was, but uh, these kinds of tests uh, uh, prevent rawhide from, from being completely broke or broken. Uh, on the body page, even for rawhide updates, you can see that's the results for uh, uh, for the <coughs> for the requested update and uh, there uh, what, uh, how they ended you can click 
from the body back to OpenQA and see, see the results and inspect as a package maintainer and contributor the results yourself. Uh, there is, uh, as I've mentioned, there is one small opportunity for uh, having a rawhide broken and that's exactly once per release uh, when we are uh, merging uh, site tech from Mars rebuild, this uh, one doesn't go through the gating test, unfortunately. So these are the cases where Federer is broken uh, right after Mars rebuilds, usually. And uh, the basic concept of how OpenQA uh, does the testing is it creates a repository which contains the proposed package updates and, version, and new versions and uh, tests, uh, tests it against the known stable uh, package set, uh, it tests uh, its installation, and uh, updating to a proposed update. And if they pass, we celebrate. <laughs> and I would like to uh, say a few things about common bugs, which is uh, not so uh, well-known category of bugs we, we use around uh, Federalities. These are bugs we consider important, but uh, not, uh, not as bad uh, that they would block the release, which usually means, uh, as for example, that some of the hardware uh, with the new federal release is broken, but that hardware is known to be, uh, to be used in just small percentage of uh, user installations and systems. And uh, so we create common bugs uh, uh, for entries for those. Uh, these are described on uh, askgrotfederalproject.org and uh, there are usually is written some work around on uh, how you can uh, live with this category of bugs. Uh, yeah, the work around is, uh, I think it's, it's the good thing uh, that we provide if uh, there is one that we test and is known to work because uh, then uh, the users, if they hit the bug, and they'll probably hit it some sometimes uh, after the release. Uh, they want to know how to fix it for themselves or how to uh, go past it so they can read it in the common bugs. Yeah, John Lennon adds, by coming to the first Beatles show, a new groupie is born. So I hope that uh, there will be more people coming to the Beatles show and uh, we'll try to get rid of them finally. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, would like any questions and comments you may or would have. Yesterday, we learned that the Git forge change would probably also mean that we move, at least for components, from Bugzilla to the Git forge for issues. Would all your use of Bugzilla change at the same time, too? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we are, we are uh, having a meeting uh, right after this, this talk with a, respons a responsible team, and we are planning to uh, figure out and somehow innovate uh, our processes w once we are moving to a different DistGit solutions and uh, blocker trackers. Okay, and then as as one of the people who's been responsible for RHEL's blocker process, I was wondering what was the reason that you have like blockers separate from Bugzilla and are you gonna maintain that in the future? Uh, you mean the blocker, the voting process? Yeah. Uh, we have shown. This is uh, just a, an uh, addition uh, from recent days. Uh, the blocker uh, is designated in Bugzilla and it's flagged there if it's accepted or not. And we didn't have the voting process, uh, the separate voting process at all. We handled the voting on meetings only, which were too of a time consuming, especially for us in the European time zone, which like so was taking place till late night. So we just added it on top to accelerate votings around uh, things that are like uh, clear cut so we can resolve this asynchronously. And as for why we did it on, uh, on Pagir uh, instead of Bugzilla, it's been two or three years. I don't know the exact technical reasons for that decision. 
So probably API integration, my colleague that worked on that uh, left uh, two minutes ago, so <laughs> he could well, have commented. I believe that one of the reasons was that uh, I believe that one of the reasons why it doesn't work with Bugzilla is because we didn't want to clutter the Bugzilla communication. Uh, the blocker review process has a different, uh, you know, different discussion. So we didn't want to keep it together with the uh, with the bug in in Bugzilla, and we created a ticket in Pagir to communicate about whether this is a blocker or if it's not a blocker, because this shouldn't be part of discussing the technicalities of the bug itself, right? So that's probably one of the reasons. Okay, that makes sense. In, uh, we had a similar thing in RHEL where we, when you propose a blocker on a RHEL ticket, it, it like makes a RHEL MISC ticket for, for all of the administrative stuff. And mm -hmm. That's working really well, actually. So hopefully whatever happens, we can like maintain that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll see how uh, how it goes with the with the replacement of Bugzilla, and how capable it will be to uh, do the stuff. And uh, we will adjust the applications to follow with it. Uh, yeah, I think we will be able to. We have good people on our team, so they will be able to do it. <laughs> Thanks.